In the United States, they are almost standard, so-called stack interchanges. Huge multi-story highway intersections where all traffic between two expressways is distributed across four levels on their most direct way. These complex structures enable a continuous flow of traffic even during heavy traffic rush hours and all that without loops, weaving or tight curves. In cities such as Los Angeles, Dallas or Houston and Atlanta, they are not only functional but also the standard. In many cases, there are several of these gigantic and super tall interchanges right after each other within a single urban area. They are simply a defining feature of American transportation infrastructure and car culture. This type of highway interchange often seems oversized to European eyes, downright megalomaniacal. And there is a reason for that. Such highway structures are extremely rare here. I mean, there exists a few but we can count them on one hand honestly. Unlike in Dallas for example, where there are at least a dozen in one metro area. Although there are modern junctions with overpass ramps, isolated turbine intersections and even the occasional multi-story section, a full-fledged four-level stack interchange, as common as in the US, is an absolute exception on the old continent. Instead, other types of intersections dominate in Europe today. The classic Cloverleaf, Boring. which became the standard early on due to its compact design and relatively low cost, or some more advanced solutions with one or two flyovers. But why is this the case? What distinguishes the European approach to highway construction from that in North America? In this video, we take a closer look at the reasons behind Europe's missing stack interchanges and we answer the question of whether Europe is simply more pragmatic when it comes to road infrastructure or perhaps just has less leeway. Perhaps the most obvious reason is space. Compared to most parts of the US, Europe is much more densely populated. Towns and villages are close together and the landscape is highly fragmented by rivers, forests, nature reserves and century-old settlement structures. A complete stack interchange can quickly take up the area of several football fields, including all ramps, access roads, safety lanes and noise barriers. Such areas are rarely available in Europe and when they are, they are usually highly contested. In many cases, building a four-story concrete monster in in the middle of the countryside, or even worse, in the middle of the city, is politically, logistically and socially unfeasible. The land negotiations alone would take years, not to mention the resistance from the population. Another point is history. While many cities in the US only grew during the car era, with wide streets, generously planned traffic access and plenty of space for large infrastructure, the European transport network was largely integrated into existing structures. Cities such as Paris, Cologne, Milan and Vienna already had their basic form when horse-drawn carriages were still in use. Motorways therefore had to fit into an already dense and often chaotic network with significantly less scope for large standardized solutions. This is why many European intersections look so improvised. A bit of cloverleaf here, an overpass there. The most important thing is that it somehow has to work. Efficiency takes precedence over elegance. A complete stack interchange costs many times more than a simple cloverleaf intersection, not only in terms of construction, but also in terms of maintenance. So, with a simple cloverleaf, you only need one bridge in total, which is a huge difference from five or even more bridge structures for a four level stack. And for many European countries, the sobering question arises, is it even worth it? Traffic volumes are sometimes high, but rarely as extreme as in megacities such as Los Angeles, DFW or Houston. 
Instead, they prefer well thought out smaller solutions, turbine intersections, half stacks or modernized clover leaves with flyovers. So a simple clover leaf with overpasses for particularly congested routes or a mix of everything in between. This saves space and money, but is obviously not as visually impressive. Added to this is the European planning culture, environmental regulations, citizen participation, lengthy approval procedures and countless expert reports make the construction of large traffic structures a lengthy process. In China, for example, a huge intersection can be built within a few years. In Europe, the preliminary planning alone can sometimes take a decade. So, both political systems have their advantages, but also disadvantages, of course. Speaking about politics, a huge highway interchange is difficult to sell today. Ceiling, noise and landscape destruction. All of these regularly cause protests. Many European countries, therefore, tend to focus on traffic separation and bypasses, rather than central mega-junctions. And so, it is that in Europe, every second motorway junction looks like the one before it. A simple clover leaf with four loops, sometimes slightly modified but always similar. This design dates back to the early years of highway construction and became the white standard due to its simplicity and space efficiency. It is inexpensive, works mostly well, but offers no wow factor. Flying over it with a drone, one sees pragmatic boredom rather than technical fascination. Europe's highway interchanges are not spectacular by any means, but in most cases they do what they are designed for, linking two highways together. While the US adorns itself with gigantic stack interchanges, Europe prefers to rely on proven compact solutions. This is not due to a lack of ability, but rather to the way cities have grown, how planning procedures work and how much attention is paid to space, the environment and costs. Stack interchanges are impressive, but they simply do not fit in with Europe's densely populated, historically grown landscape. Let me definitely know which interchange type you prefer the most and on which topic you want to see a new video next. Hey, this is me, Imperator. If you really like this video, let me know in the comments or hit that like, hype or subscribe button. But if you really want to support my work, you could consider supporting me on Patreon or per channel membership. With the support over there, I can really focus on making more videos like that and grow as a channel. So I want to thank all the wonderful people who already decided to support me on Patreon so, so much. You're absolute legends. See you the next time. Bye bye.